He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to this Easter service for St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Please join me for our greeting this morning. This is the day. Angels bring light into our shadows and gardeners harvest good news. This is the day the Lord awakens us with unexpected grace and the sun breaks out in song. This is the day the Lord has made, the day when life triumphs over death, when love pushes aside fear, when hope walks with us in every moment. Please join me in our opening prayer this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Easter as on that very first day, you come, steadfast love, walking with us to discover the good news of the empty grave so that we can run to tell everyone we meet. We watch and wait, gardener of our hearts, as we seek to understand this mystery which leaves us scratching our heads until we turn to you for answers and discover all we need to know when we call us by name. On this Easter, you whisper to us, Spirit of God, of love which rolls away fears, of hope which folds grave clothes, of grace which overturns every assumption. You are our grace, our hope, our peace. In the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning and happy Easter. Thanks for joining us today. Today, Easter Sunday, is a day of celebration and great joy. It's also a day filled with lots of other emotions. Kind of like this year. This year has really been filled with lots and lots of emotions. We've experienced fear, anxiety, sadness, and great joy. Let's listen to the Easter story from the Bible and see if you can hear all of the emotions that those people felt all those years ago. Jesus' friends were very sad when Jesus died on the cross. His friends, Mary Magdalene and another Mary, went to the tomb very early in the morning when the sky was still pink and orange. They were going to put special spices on Jesus' body, and they wondered with one another how they were going to roll away that enormous stone from in front of the tomb. But when they arrived, there was a tremendous earthquake as an angel came and rolled away the stone from the entrance of the tomb. The guards who were, who were there were terrified. The angel said to the woman, The women, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus, and he has been raised. He isn't there. Go tell the disciples. Mary Magdalene and Mary were both afraid and excited. They hurried away from the tomb to tell the disciples. And then, surprise, Jesus met them and greeted them. They were so excited that they worshipped him right there. Jesus told them not to be afraid and to go and tell the disciples. Wow, I heard lots of different emotions. Did you? Let's see, I heard sadness because Jesus died. I heard anxiety about how the women were going to roll away that big stone. I heard fear from the soldiers and the women. I heard excitement and joy as the women realized that Jesus was alive. And then I heard surprise and excitement when the women saw Jesus with their own eyes. I wonder what emotions you feel as you hear the story. I always feel sad at the beginning of this story, but then I feel so excited and amazed and grateful by the end. Today we celebrate Easter and we celebrate that after very sad things, God makes it possible for amazing things to happen. We can be very happy today that Jesus is alive. I'm going to show you the sign language sign for resurrection. That means to be alive again, so that we can all practice that resurrection together. You ready? Did you see it? So it's two fingers laying down, and then they stand up like being alive again. This is resurrection, friends, and this is what we celebrate today. Can you have a prayer with me? Bow your heads. Dear God, we give thanks for all of our emotions. 
Thank you for the moments when we can go from sad to happy. Thank you for the love of Jesus who was with us through all of our emotions. Thank you for always being with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. We'll see you next time. Happy Easter. Thank you for worshiping with us on this beautiful Easter morning. We give thanks for this day of resurrection. And today I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. It's a story that many of us will have heard over and over and over again. It's my favorite Easter story. So I invite you just to take some deep breaths, to center yourself, uh, to receive this resurrection, receive this moment where death has become life, and to listen with the ears of your heart. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, what a beautiful feeling resurrection is. This moment where we realize that you have done the impossible and you have reached down into death and you have brought forth life. And we feel that. We feel the power and movement of your spirit as we worship you this day and know that you do the same for us. God, we thank you that you are living among us. The risen Christ is here. And we thank you that your spirit does for us what we cannot do for ourselves you focus us, and you prepare us to receive, and you give us all that we need to answer the questions that we have. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Wow. I, I don't know about you, but especially this morning, I don't know if it's because we've been dealing with the pandemic for a year. I mean, this feels like resurrection. And I couldn't help but think of the, the words of the psalmist in Psalm thirty. Verse 5, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I mean, we have reached the morning of joy. God has caused Jesus to rise. Jesus, who is dead, is alive forevermore through the power and action of God. He was dead. 
that which was dead, that which had ceased to exist, has now taken on new meaning. And we see again this beauty in Scripture, the Scripture that declares with God all things are possible. So the good news for us, no, really, it's really great news for us, is that the resurrection is an event that's planned not only for Jesus. It's not only for Jesus. When we say yes to Christ, when we have died and risen with Christ, then we know that one day we will live eternally with him. Remember that Jesus promised his disciples in his last discussion with them that he would go and prepare a place for them. And that's our promise. There's a place for us with Jesus when we leave this earth. But we need to think of resurrection in much broader terms than that. Yes, that is a blessing, no doubt. But, and this is what we need to hear again this morning, resurrection is definitely not reserved only for the time of death. I'm going to say that again. Resurrection is definitely not reserved only for the time of death. We have the ability, thanks be to God, more grace being poured out, to experience moments of resurrection. We can experience moments where we are reminded again, yes, these things that we speak about, these things that we teach about, these things that we read about over and over again, these things are true. Resurrection morning is not just about the empty tomb. It's about our encounters with the living Christ and the truth that he just keeps appearing and he just keeps appearing and he just keeps appearing. Easter begins again for the, us this morning as we've heard the text about those who saw him first. See, with this gospel text, we're in real time. We're with Mary in the early morning when she comes to the empty tomb. We're with her as she runs to tell the others. We're running with Peter and the other disciple. We're right there in the story. And see again that Jesus could not be contained by death. And we're seeing people in the moment when their belief starts to take root. Something out of the ordinary has happened. Something unexpected has happened. And we see the different responses to that. Jesus and the other disciple, that which sought to hold Jesus could not hold him. They experienced that. Not death, not darkness, not being despised, spit on, nailed to the cross. Nothing could hold him down. Now, they might not know exactly what they believe at this point, but those two disciples knew that they had just encountered something that they'd never encountered before. This was something new. This was something extraordinary. And then Mary, of course, the first to arrive, unable to leave the place that she believed Jesus would be, seeing the angels and not quite understanding, seeing Jesus and not recognizing him until when? It's that beautiful moment in the story, until the moment when he called her name. In that very moment, that which is ordinary, that which she had understood, that which was normal for her in that moment, that experience plus the holy, holy experience intersect in that moment. The voice of God calls her name. And she knows. <laughs> she knows. She believed what we would have all believed, that the dead do not come back to life. But when God called her by name, she was awakened to a whole another possibility. She was awakened to a whole different reality. And there's incredible intimacy when God calls our name. One more thing about this gospel text that's so interesting to me. Mary doesn't go back and tell the disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead. Her words were, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. The Lord is living. The Lord is living, not dead. Again, we get to see over and over again that when Jesus calls us, then we will experience him in a new and unique way. That we will experience him in a way that we can understand. And here's where the news again gets better and better and better and better for us because Jesus is still calling. Jesus is still appearing. Resurrection is happening all around us. And I want to share one story with you. It's a story that happened here in this sanctuary 
at this table just a few days ago. Just a few days ago when we were here recording the Good Friday Tenebrae service. Eric has shared what happened to him with me and has granted me permission to share it with you. But we stood reading the Passion Narrative. It was Stephen and Eric and I reading. Jordan was in here recording. We were the only ones here. And they were, we were reading through the familiar story that we have heard time and time and time again. And even though Eric doesn't have adequate words to describe what happened to him, and I don't either yet, we're still living with it, right here at this altar table, the words came to life in him. So the very story that he had heard many times again, by God's Spirit, he actually entered into this story again in a u unique way. It's, it's a supernatural kind of thing. It is God's way of doing things. God lifting him out of the ordinary of just reading through the story. And God giving him the grace and the ability to enter into into that story and it was in the entering into that story it was the risen Christ the living God working through Eric when he began to see and know this is a resurrection moment this is a moment that is out of the ordinary this is a moment where what I believed would happen and what I believe this experience would be like was changed by the movement of God and in that movement of God what happened? He was given right there in the passion narrative. And we know what happens in the passion narrative, the darkness of that. Right there in the middle of that, he was given the joy of resurrection right in the middle of that. God is still moving with us. God is still giving us resurrection moments over and over and over again. And I believe that God calls us this morning, on this Easter morning, to go again with God to a still place, to the sanctuary of your heart, and invite God to make God's self known to you, to intersect what you believe will happen to you today with what is possible with God. May your resurrection lift you, bring, your, bring you great joy, and may you go and tell the others. In Christ's name, amen.
all about vaccinations during this time of the pandemic. How about a resurrection shot? <laughs> Go out into the world, open your heart, gather with those that you love today. If you can't be with them in person, connect with somebody else. And through that, experience the love of the risen Christ. Jesus is here. We have seen the Lord. May you see him afresh today. Go in peace, and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Okay.